Mungkin saya kan. Hi everybody, here at Sassoon Academy in Los Angeles, California. Um, a very, very special guest, Mr. Mark Hayes. And we're so excited for him to share a little technique live here on Hair Brains. Hello. Hi Mark. How are you doing? So besides Sweet. our Facebook Live, why, why are you two here? Okay, well, yeah. hi everyone. It's great to be here as always. We're here for the Masterclass, which is happening this weekend. Nearly sold out, but I think there are a few more spaces left if you want to come down Sunday. 3 o'clock, is that right? Sunday, 3 o'clock. Sunday, here, 3 o'clock. in Santa Monica. Yeah, so uh, if you wanted to come down. Um, and we're releasing our, well, we're kind of launching our new collection here, which is, I suppose it's based on a very specific period, based on the sort of mid-70s. And um, the setting is when fashion and street style segued from the disco era into punk. So I suppose that's, that was kind of the jumping off point for the whole thing. So influences from an academy perspective, the main influence, to be honest, is the iconic Italian brand Fiorucci, which I kind of think is enjoying something of a resurgence. So it's that, that's the kind of idea. And Fiorucci kind of was one of the first um, fashion brands to really look very deeply at the concept of street style. So that's kind of why it's important for us. On the beautiful Aeva, I'm gonna do a haircut that was, that was very popular at that time. And it was called, Sassoon called it the Shake. Um, in France, it was called the Coupe Sauvage, the Savage Cut. And if you knew Aeva, you'd know why that was appropriate <laughs> for her to have a Savage Cut. Um, and it's, it's kind of gonna use a technique that we call reverse layering. So essentially what I'm going to do, I'm going to work using all of the existing length around the edges and then work a shorter shape through the front and then cut the hair in concentric kind of angles or concentric sections that follow around the head, getting slightly longer each time so that uh, the hair just lays over one another and you get this kind of little serrated edge to the shape. So that's the kind of idea. So lifting the hair straight up, I'll just turn around so you can see. So keeping all that length on the, on the outline. I've cut, I've cut some of the back already and I've cut it again with that reverse layered, layered tech idea. It's going to come a little bit shorter on the, uh, on the outline. So yeah, so using, using techniques that were, that kind of make the hair have this kind of very nice, loose outline shape, whilst cutting, making the hair look as though it's got a very loose, unstructured shape, but doing it in a very technical way, which I think is, um, is very much the modus operandus for Sassoon work. That sound good? That sound kind of. Uh, 392 oh. people here with us. Hello, 392 people. Um, yeah, so, you know, talking a little bit about the, um, the technique, I think it's always good to, you know, in whatever you're doing, I think it's good to try and think of. Tracy said a really cool thing to me ages ago. She said, um, Who are you? No, she didn't say that. Well, she has said that in the past, but. Didn't say that. She said, um, exhaust the technique before you resort to pointing and slicing and all that stuff, which I think is so true. Okay, so now we've got this little kind of cool little fringe, this kind of little texture. We'll take another section behind the first. I'm going to slightly pivot this one. So the first one followed the shape of the hairline. The second one will come down to the same point. So we've kind of done one that way. And the next one pivots from the same point. What the reason for that is that it just makes it easier if you straighten the sections off, it makes it easier to come back over the head technique wise. So, whatever area of the head you are focusing on, you're always thinking about the next step. And what, what I tend to do as well is I put my finger on the head to accurately gauge the width of each section. 
because sometimes, you know, we sort of say take sections of fingers with, but actually laying your finger on the head kind of helps to keep that area of the technique, that part of the technique, even. And technique's important, not necessarily just to create a shape, although it is important for that. I think it's important to create, sh to create shapes consistently well. So, you know, obviously, to me, creativity is a big part of, of, of hair, of any hairdresser's profession. But consistency, I, I think, certainly in a commercial sense, is important as well. And I think te what technique gives you is, is consistency. You know, that's kind of what it does. Um, so, we've got the section now running across the head. Mark, can I have you come around this, this way? So Jason? Which way? This Towards oh. me, so I'm running. Towards you? Yeah. That I'm going to go behind the hands. Right. That way. Jason's going to come this way. Okay. Oh, she's straight on? Yeah. It's nice to see you right okay. there. So, okay. yeah, lifting the hair up. Sorry, lifting the hair up. So that's the section, yeah? That's the first section. So you just draw the hair off, straight up. You feel the hair pass through your fingers. You, you see it drop, and then you know that that's gonna be slightly longer than the previous one. So you're lifting the hair right up. So you know that there's not gonna be any line in the, um, in the edge. And it just means that as the hair lays over each other, you just get this nice kind of broken, slightly serrated feeling to the hair. Okay, letting the edge drop away. Standing behind means you can lift the hair straight up. Obviously it means you guys can see as well, but it just means that I'm lifting the hair up as, as high as I possibly can. I have a question, I have a couple of questions actually, Mark. So what one the hell the, are you talking about? <laughs> I have a couple of questions from the audience, actually. Um, would you and could you work this from the front? So standing at the front, looks beautiful. You, yes, you, you could, but it just makes it more difficult. Because if you're, I always find it easier to draw the hair towards me than to push it away. If you're standing in the front, and plus the knees, the body kind of gets in the way. You know, I think, again, part of technique is thinking about what's going to make it easiest to create the effect you want. And that's not just where you put your hands and how you lift the hair and all that sort of stuff. It also comes into play like where you stand to create what you do. You know, that's, that's kind of crucial to it as well. So I would say standing behind means you'll, you'll naturally lift the hair higher than standing in front. You'll tend slightly, unless you're, you've got to really concentrate much more to push the hair away from you. So I would say um, always stand, but in this instance, always stand inside and lift the hair up. And also you can kind of do this sort of stuff as well. You can just kind of cheat your fingers up a little bit and let more of the hair drop away from the outline. So you said, I remember you saying to me once, the head's between you and... Yeah, it's like hands, head, you. Or in this case, me. Yeah. I wish it was me. <laughs> Glad it's you. Obviously. <laughs> um, and then, great, thank you. Um, another question, and this is a good one, because I love the way you, how you talk about suitability. What kind of client would like this haircut the most? And how do you figure that out? Oh my goodness. <laughs> suitability, how long have we got? <laughs> okay, again, right, so here we go. So put your finger on the hair where your last section was, and then that's where your section will be. Yeah? And the reason I do it, it looks, pretty, it looks really basic, but I thought about it a, a couple of weeks ago in London, and we were doing these haircuts in the, uh, masters, the, the master's course that we hold in London, and I just sort of thought, if you're trying to take even finger width section, then just put your finger on the head and it will tell you where they are. Because then, next time, you, next time you, I cut Aiva's hair, you know, if I lift out what I've done already, you've got these, you know, you've got these kind of little, then if you can see that, you've got these kind of little sections in the hair. Can you see that? The little kind of serrated edge. That's what you're kind of creating. And each section then will be even. Um, suitability, my, my thing is, Suitability has got less to do with the way someone looks and much more to do with the way they are, you know, who they are as a person. So I think you can only really, you know, you can't prescribe anything for anyone unless you know what, who they are. Do you know what I mean? So I think for me, once you know the person, 
you can kind of start to work out what what they're into, what sort of haircuts, what you know, what sort of style they like. Because I think a, 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 a kind of the suitability thing is more than just a physical appraisal of somebody else. I mean, it is that as well to a certain extent. But the much more important thing is um, who they are. So I, I think suitability is just talking to the person in front of you, finding out a little bit about them, and then designing a haircut that's going to suit them as a person, not necessarily how tall they are. I mean, when you think about it, it's kind of stupid, really, how tall they are. I don't know, you know, what sort of shoes they wear. What should, you know, that, it's, it's, that's got nothing, you know, it's got nothing to do with it, really. It's who they are as a person. Because as soon as you start making rules for like, what people should have haircut-wise, someone will come along and break those rules, but look amazing. Do you know what I mean? So it's got to be about who the person is. And I think the most experience, to me, you can, you can almost kind of gauge the experience of a hairdresser by how they describe what they're going to do with hair. You know, I think when you're more experienced, you, you kind of, when you're less experienced, you talk in terms of technique, like this bit's going to be short, that bit's going to be long, it's going to, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a concaving technique or something. They talk about technique, whereas when you get more experienced, you just talk about the look, what the look's going to be to a client. You know, it's, I, I try and use like very emotive words um, that kind of build a picture of a, of a haircut, not necessarily how I'm going to do it. That's not, that's not what's important. It's what it's going to look like. Um, and I think more experienced hairdressers do that. So many questions. It's obviously, why I, it's obviously because I'm not explaining it properly. <laughs> no, they're on to the next. Oh, right. That was explained beautifully and a lot of good comments. Be looks amazing, looks beautiful. Thank you. Who did the color, which we'll talk about. We're gonna have one of our colors come up and explain and talk through the color. We'll also put the formula in the comments as well. There's a big hello from Bolivia, and you know who. Ah. Rodolfo is watching from Bolivia. Ask him if he got to the Chelsea Manchester United game. <laughs> I will, I'll send that to him. That's it. <laughs> Um, Italy, all over the world, people are watching, which is amazing. You're keeping everybody up late in certain areas Sorry. of the globe. I'm up late, really. <laughs> I only got in yesterday, so I'm... See, so you've got that kind of little jaggedy... I'll show you from profile again. You'll probably be able to see it against my T-shirt a bit better. So you've got... So essentially then... <clears throat> so you have that. Amazing. That's the first fringe, second fringe. Thing. But because they're all lifted, there's no weight in them whatsoever. So when they fall, it just falls with this kind of really nice, kind of weightless kind of quality to it. And as because you're lifting the hair, you keep all of this stuff down here. I mean, this would be great if it was like super long, but we'll, um, we'll get to that. Yeah, kind of cool. Okay. So, um, so now it's, it's, it's a case of working parallel. So once again, just turn. You can see the sections now have gone from being very diagonal and we've kind of straightened them right up by staying on the same point above the ear and coming up. So now we can kind of just working up to the highest point of the head here. So where, where the head sort of gets to the highest point here then starts to round off towards the back. Just take it through that way. Right down into the edge, which I've already cut in the back. I want to leave, try and leave all that. So really, from a technical perspective, I'm only going to work with the hair to about there. The, the hair underneath that, the hair down here, will be dropped away. And again, lifting the hair right up. And all, you know, I think, um, standing behind the head, when I get to this point, you know, I've got quite long fingers, so I can take a lot of hair in one go. Obviously, if you haven't, you can kind of just allow the hair to drop up. But it's just feeling that section fall through your fingers. And you can feel it drop, and then you know it's kind of cool to, to work the hair through. I'm probably going probably gonna to disconnect a bit of the crown. I just let that fall over, maybe. I don't know yet. It might be too much hair. Ian, he's asked a lot of questions, he's very into it, is, um, you know, what kind of boundaries oh, of sorry. length would you push with this kind of technique? What kind of boundaries of length? Yeah, is there boundaries in length? You mean the, con the contrast between the short and the long? Yeah, or, or 
I think anything, you know, I think ulti ultimately it's about, it's a, obviously it's about what you've got to work with originally. Um, you know, it's what you have to, to start with. So, but I think to, for me, the most dynamic hair styles, hair looks, are ones that have a, a kind of very extreme contrast of length. You know, I think the shorter to the longer. Obviously it's got to visually, visually balance. But to me, once again, balance, there's no rules for balancing haircuts. It's just what you like the look of. It's saying, well, you know, what you like and what the person you're working on likes the look of. Um, so I would say if you've got the length, if you've got the length to contrast with the length through the interior, go for it. Absolutely go for it. The more dramatic, the better. So here again, you know, just working across the top of the head. Sort of, it's almost like working, I suppose it's like a flat concave, really. It always makes me smile, the concave, because I'm going back to that question about technique and using jargon words, I remember, probably a lot of you have heard this story, I remember teaching this kid once, an assistant, and I said to them, they were quite new, and I said to them, what are you, you, know, you going to do? They said, oh, I'm going to do a concave. And I said to this person, I said, okay, do you, does your client know what a concave is? And the client was like, no, they don't know. I said, the thing is, you know, I was trying to give her, this girl a bit of advice. And I said, you should never really use jargon. You should just describe what it's going to look like, because then the person can envisage what it's going to look like. Explain to your client what a concave will look like. And she said, she turned to this client and she went, it's going to be like a hole in the back. And I said, well, that sounds lovely, doesn't it? Who wouldn't want their hair, <laughs> Who wouldn't want their hair like that? I'll have two, I'll have one on each side as well. Wow, that's stunning. That's a yeah, comment with lots of, lots of hearts. <laughs> what, what, it is beautiful. What, what the concave story? <laughs> no, the haircut. Oh, the haircut. <laughs> so just have a little, what I'm gonna do now is just have a quick look at how, where we are. Cause there's, cause what I've done, I've, I've kind of cut the back in, in a similar technique through here. So it's got the short and long that runs through. And then I've just got this little little panel on the top now, but I just want to have a quick, what we say in England, a quick butcher's hook, to see what's happening. We will also have uh, a little recap as well. Um, once you get through that, we have some people that are just joining in, and oh, okay, we're, cool. we're here at Sassoon Academy with Mark Hayes, who's doing this Facebook Live today. We're also prepping for a masterclass, which we'll be holding here at the Sassoon Academy in Santa Monica, Sunday. Sunday, yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, which I thought was tomorrow, but it's not. Sunday afternoon from 3 to 7. So if anybody's still interested, there is a few tickets left. Mark, myself, Richard Rivera, and the whole Academy team will be here presenting the collection. Great ideas, always a fantastic source of inspiration. And we'd love to see you if you're, if you're available. Yeah, if you want to come down and hang out and, you know, spend a couple of hours getting into hair. It's fun as well. I think it, it's important that the whole thing is a fun experience, you know. That's, that's, for me, that's the main thing. You, you know, it's kind of inspiring and it's interesting and it's got something about it maybe, but it should also be fun, you know. So I think that's kind of happening. I kind of like the way that's sitting. I'm just gonna have a quick look. You know, I think part, part of work, obviously I'm cutting the hair dry, for, partly for practical purposes, but also because a lot of the, a lot of the, the I always think there's a, like the Pareto's principle about cutting hair. The last 20% of the effort gets 80% of the result. The first 80% of a haircut gets you 20% of the result. Because you're just trying to, you're sort of getting rid of what you don't want at the beginning, and then eventually you end up working with what you do want. Everybody wants to know how you cut the back for it. Cut the back, okay. So, I'll show you. It's gonna be slightly more difficult to show you this. But basically, what I did, I started, her hairline is kind of a, a little bit sort of fine, a bit baby fine. So I took sections this way. So slightly diagonally. I never, I never actually take a truly horizontal or vertical section, only because I don't, oh sorry, I don't think they, um, fit onto the head nicely. You know, I don't, I'd never take a section horizontal or, or really vertical. They're always a little bit off to the diagonal because I think it makes the hair wrap onto the head 
in a cooler way. So essentially what I did was to lift the hair right up. So in this instance, I did actually stand outside the haircut just because it's more awkward trying to get over the head. Go this way, lift the hair up and just literally, literally cut a square line from the center on both sides. And then each section is taken on the same angle, so slightly diagonally, dropping down is the edge, lifting the hair right up, allowing the outline, once again, to drop away, allowing that first section to drop away, and then putting a section a finger's width longer. So exact, ex exactly the same as the front, but just in the back. And then again, finger's width sectioning all the way through, so you can pick up the same. The, the advantage of that, mapping it out in, in such a methodical way, is that in, in six or eight weeks' time, if Eva wanted to, we could do exactly the same haircut. That's the, that's the kind of point. And then as I come up to the round of the head, as the hairline comes up over here, you have to kind of angle your fingers a little bit more. If I wanted it to be really extreme, I would come through this way and then cut and then just allow the head to drift through my fingers and work out, you know, work out to more of an extreme length. But here, there, there wasn't really, this is kind of more or less where it was, the, the outline length. So all the way through, and I've gone up to, probably about here. So sort of midway between the, um, midway between the occipital bone and what I call the, the kind of roundest point of the head at the top. So I've got to about there. So essentially now, what we've got, we've got this kind of very, very acute angle because of the way I've kind of over-directed my fingers. I don't know if you can see that against the white gown. This beautiful kind of graph, sort of what color would you say it is? It's kind of like a, a light graphite, isn't it? Is there such a thing as light graphite? Or we just, a, we just made it up, <laughs> a light graphite. So yeah, so you've got this nice, kind of very jaggedy edge. And then... Um... You know what, there's a really good question, Mark. Oh yeah. Um, about advice, which I know you're very good at giving. Oh, blimey. So, <laughs> advice, what advice would you give a hairstylist that understands cutting, yep. but wants to be better at precision cutting? Without me trying to sound like a commercial, <laughs> come and work with Tracy and I. <laughs> no, I, no, seriously. Well, I'm serious about that, but, but um, if you want to learn how to cut, well, I mean, Sassoon, Sassoon is about that. You know, I don't, want to, I don't want to, again, I don't want to sound like commercial, but Sassoon is about precision cutting. That's kind of our way of working. So I would say that, but I w I'll tell you what I would actually say. I, I believe, I believe that any hairdresser, me included, could spend the rest of their career just learning lines, graduation, layering, just those three things, and trying to perfect those. Because ultimately, they underpin everything else, you know. Is it that idea of practice perfectly? Same thing over and over again? Practice, yeah, absolutely, yeah. There, I mean, there's a certain degree, so here, so here you can see, I don't know if you can see, the, so that's the section there, that's the last section, that's where the length is. What I'm gonna do is hold that up, and now I'm working in, you can see, the, into this extreme length, I'll allow the, head to drop away so I'm fingers whipped above what I've just cut I come through to I only ever cut to here I can't cut in there because it just freaks me out a bit to be honest and then what I'm going to do my fingertips will just replace where my knuckles are so I lift the hair back up and now my fingertips are where my knuckles were I put the scissors in go through a little bit further and just relax the grip a little bit and just allow the hair to kind of trail through the fingers a little bit more. Just let it drop through. So, what I've got now, if I lift the hair up, I'm not sure how clean, it should be quite clean, angle-wise. What I do when I lift the hair up, yeah, you can see that, so you've got that kind of, that, and then it comes up and up and up and up and up into the length. But it's not just pointed and chopped away, it's kind of done with a bit of, you know, it's craftsmanship. That's what I think is, is important. You know, Vidal always used to take, to say that, about making the, making the career of hairdressing or making the, the methods of hairdressing into a craft, giving it a bit of dignity. And I believe in that. 
you know, I believe that what we do is, I, I, you know, I kind of think it's very important. You know, we've got the, Vidal always used to say, you've got the power to make someone feel great or terrible. You know, so again, so working from here, come through to the knuckles to there. Put your fingertips where your knuckles were. And then you just open and close the scissors really kind of quickly and then just slowly slide up to the length. So you're just really scooping the hair out. YS Park combs. Very nice to work with. Go through the hair nicely. So you can kind of go from you know reasonably short hair into like super long hair. What was I going to say about technique? I was going to say something else about that as well. Technique, repetition. It was about the question about the yeah. classic thing. I can't remember what I was going to say. Understand hair cutting being more precise. Oh well, lost to them. What's your favorite Sassoon uh, classic haircut? Oh blimey. Um, We use, the thing is, that's a really hard question to answer. I know, I didn't ask, I'm just <laughs> on the messenger. I mean, I think, obviously, from a photographic point of view, I think the purity of the Nancy Kwan is difficult to beat. I know Vidal's favourite was the five point, but I, that's what he regarded as his finest piece of work. I know he used to spend ages asking him how he did it. He eventually did tell me, so I know. So one day I'm going to do a classic course well, what we call the, the idea is that we're going to do a heritage course with all the Sassoon heritage haircuts in. Um, the Nancy Kwan, I think, from a photographic point of view, is the most beautiful. However, because we do use our library, our heritage, so often in our work, in, in the same way that you know fashion houses do. Um, you know, at the moment, I would say that Balenciaga is one of the most directional brands, and they 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 use their heritage all the time. So I think there's that, I mean, I'm kind of in my mind, I'm thinking the, at the moment, the brush as well, but then the, the Claire Straight Shake that, um, that Pat Lewis and Herta Keller worked on back in the day, in the, in the early part of the 70s, that's very much informing the haircut I'm doing here on Aeva. So, um, so there's that as well. So it, it probably changes each time, to be honest. Probably you know the, the actual the, the kind your favourite Sassoon look changes from season to season because you get influenced by different ones. We're very lucky that we've got this incredible heritage, this incredible kind of library of looks. So again, just allowing the hair. You can just see how the hair drops away. Yeah? And here I'm just putting a little bit more of an angle because I'm working with less distance of hair. You start with it, you don't start square because then it kind of, you start with an angle. So it's the first, the one before was kind of here and now we're kind of more there because there's less hair to work with here, less distance. So it's all about, you know, it's, to a certain extent as well, it's about fitting what you're doing inside the hairlines. I'm just thinking, how much time do we, um, we have left? Yeah, so I would say learn the classics. Learn the classics. Everything else is a derivative of that. Everything else you can possibly think of in terms of cutting, in terms of cutting with scissors the way we do, is derived from those three techniques. You know, with, with like, you know, disconnection and a little bit of, you know, if you can learn a little bit of disconnection, a little bit of freehand, you're set. But they are very difficult to master. How long much time? 11 minutes. 11 minutes. Yeah. That's very specific. I do like specificity. I'm on it today. I do like specificity. Um, what scissors, Mark? Somebody's asking what scissors are you into these days? The, well, yeah, very good question. These are um, Hikari scissors. And um, I was actually given a pair a long while ago. Tracy actually turned me on to these scissors. Um, yes, yeah, whatever I can get for free. 
<laughs> Basically, but no. you've never put them down since, have you? No, 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 no. What, what, what the interesting thing is, they, they kind of, uh, I don't know if you can see, they kind of shape like that in that handle thing. So they kind of sit in your fingers really nicely, or they sit in my, and they're kind of, they're rounded, like the blades are rounded apparently, and convex that way. So they, as you cut, they kind of, they grip the hair into the scissor. So they're not, they've got a nice feeling to them. Um, but yeah, I, I think, but I always take all the, all the finger rests and all that sort of stuff off because I can't, I can't use those. Because when I started to learn to cut, um, we didn't have finger rests. Or I don't think, my sister didn't have finger rests. So I've just never got used to um, using them. Okay, so I think we're nearly there now. So what, what I've got now is a little strip of hair in the centre. If I comb my hair this way, let me see. Yeah. So if I hold that up, we've got this, we've got a section of hair that runs that way, and a section. So you've got this little kind of uh, what shape would that be? Like a curved section, really, that then just drops over everything else. That because um, I don't want it to be too, the difference is referencing something from you know 30 years ago is one thing you don't want to do exactly the same you know, the proper coupe sauvage would be the shortest here but i kind of want to leave a little bit more length on the top because um, you know this color is beautiful but then camilla one of the, uh, the creative colorists in our academy also the principal of our academy as well actually so she's talented with hair and talented at being organized and running things as well. She's gonna color her hair, she's gonna do something else with her hair color-wise on the, on the masters on the weekend. And we put the formula in. Have we? Yeah. Fabulous. Maybe Camilla can talk about what she's done so far. Hey. To get up to this point. This is Camilla. Hi everyone, good to see you. Um, yeah, so what we did today is we did a bleaching tone, lifted with Weller, Blondor and 20 volume on the roots. And then we toned with 50 grams of a 10 stroke, which is just a 10 natural level, 20 grams of an 869, which is a level eight um, violet sondre, and then into a little bit, just five grams of 960, which is your nice violet natural in there. Did the roots for about 20 minutes and then added onto the ends for another 15 minutes just so you get an ever such slight shadow through there but keeping it really nice and clean and a, a nice light graphite graphite now I guess that's what we're going for yeah I mean I was going to say dove grey but I don't think dove grey is yeah I don't know what it is actually stone I don't know you need to think of a kind of cool word for it thumbs up to the filming whoever's filming is doing a fantastic job by the way um, okay, and so. just so that everybody know, we're about to wrap it up. Mark's going to recap. Yeah, sure. And we'll do an unveiling afterwards. And we hope to see some of you guys um, here on the weekend. Yeah, come down and say hi. Okay, so Yeva, um, the length that we have on the outlines is the length that the hair was when we started. So we haven't really changed that. And then essentially the haircut was started in the back, first of all, but I'll describe the front because you can see the technique more easily. Essentially what we did, we started with a, a section that curved around the hairline, first of all, to the top of the ear. That was my first section. Lifted the hair right up, and whatever length I had on the outline here, that determined, kept that, and then just cut a square line. So the hair obviously gets shorter there. Then the sections pivoted, pivoted until they were more or less vertical, they're still slightly diagonal, more or less vertical, and each section is a finger's width longer than the section, the prior section. So if I lift the hair out, you stay there Jason, I'll move okay. this way. If I lift the hair out this way, you'll see more the, the, the graphic nature of the technique. You can do this, I'm doing it in more of a layered haircut, you can do this to create more of a, a heavier one length line as well, you just get a very serrated edge. So lift it out that way, I'm trying to grab the whole thing in one go, being flash and a show off. So you have, so that's the first fringe, third, and it just works all the way through, up, up. And this is the little section that we've left out around the top at the moment. 
I'll, I'll, I'll probably, to be honest, what I'll do, I'll, um, Camilla will colour the hair, and then we'll, um, we'll have another look at the top. But what I like about it is that you've got this kind of very, you know, obviously on the, the Eva, you know, very striking young lady, the bleach on the hair. So it's kind of very, very strong, the, the look. But it suits her as an individual. You could take this same technique and do it, you know, maybe slightly longer or slightly differently, or somebody who doesn't, you know, isn't, and adapt it. You know, so that's what I think is kind of cool as well. You've got these techniques that can be adapted. It's not just a one-off wacky haircut. It's a technique that just makes the hair do something. So, that's it.